Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is bioburden monitoring. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end for the bonus questions. Our topic, bioburden monitoring, is covered by 1345 sections 7.5.2 and 7.5.7. There is a standalone ISO standard, 11737, Sterilization of Healthcare Products, Microbiological Methods, Part 1, Determination of the Population of Microorganisms on Products. Bioburden Monitoring in Five Words. Understand and Monitor Microbiological Counts. Bioburden Monitoring is done by testing and understanding the microbiological populations on materials used to manufacture healthcare products. Every material will have a different bioburden level. We have to take that material, test it, so that we understand the microbiological population on that product. Then, over time, we have to monitor the microbiological populations, and then, if there are any changes or spikes, investigate those. Bioburden levels are much higher on products that are organic in nature, say cotton products or other types of products of those kinds, as compared to products that go through high temperature manufacturing process like plastics, injection molding, and extrusion. Also, the more contamination a product or material is exposed to, the higher the bioburden levels could be. If, for example, the more that a product is handled by humans, likely it will have a higher bioburden level. In your bioburden monitoring program, materials and parts are placed into families based on materials of construction, manufacturing processes, and bioburden history, and then they are monitored. Once they are in a family, we will randomly sample parts from that product family and we will test those over time to monitor the bioburden levels. Any spikes, trends, or major shifts in bioburden level must be investigated to determine if they affect the sterility assurance level of our sterilization process. Bioburden is measured with colony forming units, or CFUs. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I have a bioburden monitoring program that's established and maintained. Second, all of my materials and my parts, they are grouped into families of similar nature. Third, New materials, new products, they are tested and then added to the correct family. Fourth, I have documented rationales for all my part families. Fifth, I routinely, on an established frequency, pull samples from my various part families and I test those according to the frequencies outlined in the international standards. And then finally, by any spikes in my bio burden or any trends or any shifts, I investigate those to understand what's going on and also determine if it impacts my sterilization process. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, my bioburden monitoring program is not formally documented and part of my quality management system. Second, parts are added to families without appropriate testing. Third, this rationale that supports my product families, that rationale is not documented. Fourth, I'm behind on my bioburden monitoring testing. So I have the established frequencies and I'm not fulfilling them. I have overdue tests. And then finally, when I have spikes or shifts or trends in my monitoring, in the actual results, my, micro, my microbiological populations, I ignore them and I'm not investigating those. And now for those three bonus questions. Who manages our bioburden monitoring program? Second, in the last two years, have we had any investigations into a spike or shift in bioburden monitoring. And then finally, if we have a spike, trend, or shift in monitoring, what happens at that point? How is it documented? How is it investigated? Who's involved? Can you walk me through that process? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained making quality systems simple for you.